Tomoe Nagi is one of the most spectacular throws ever invented. It's also a great way to transition to ground fighting. So in today's show, I want to take an in-depth look at Tomoe Nagi. Well, welcome everyone. I am Steve Scott, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of Freestyle Judo. Today's show is entirely devoted to Tomoe Nagi, the circle throw. And I have 10 videos lined up. It's, it's a lot of material here, so I'm going to try to do a minimum amount of yapping and let the videos talk, speak for themselves. I will have a few things to say about Tomoe Nagi before, maybe during, and a little bit after. But uh, try to keep it minimal. But let's get right at it. First of all, Tomoe Nagi, circle throw, is a very old technique coming to judo from you know the, just about every form of jiu-jitsu that was practiced in Japan. There were about 175 of them uh, in feudal uh, Japanese jiu-jitsu. Uh, they all included some type of Tomoe Nagi. You know, it went by different names. Uh, Keagi, kicking, lifting throw. Uh, Keigeishi. Uh, kicking, um, rolling backward throw. It went by different names in the different system it came from. So, And each system had a particular bent or, or reason they did this Tomoanagi type of attack. And it, it you know, kind of learned it in, in, in the systems of, of jiu-jitsu he learned, and he brought it into a, the judo. It's also been very popular in Western forms of grappling and wrestling. It's just about every form of European wrestling. And, of course, it's in Sambo. And Sambo, of course, we know directly comes from judo. But there were a lot of, um, the, you know, Middle Eastern and, and you know, the, the, the regions of the old Soviet Union that did a, a Tomonagi-like throw uh, in their styles of wrestling. So it, it has a broad appeal across the planet. No matter who you are, what you are, if you did some type of a grappling, you probably ran into a, some kind of a Tomonagi, no matter what you called it. And that's what you did in your style of wrestling. It certainly is the case in judo. In judo, we consider uh, tomonagi a sutemi waza. Sutemi means to sacrifice, sacrifice technique. And it's specifically a ma sutemi waza, a back sacrifice technique. In other words, I'm rolling onto my back <clears throat> to make the, th the throw happen. I'm sacrificing my body to the mat and throwing my opponent. Um, so even if you do a yoko tomonagi, you still spin under them, but you're primarily going onto your back. So it's a that's why it's considered a masu timiwaza. I've also heard it called a body weight throw. I first heard that called uh, that, that type of nomenclature. I, I read that in one of Jeff Gleason's books years ago, back in the early 70s, mid 70s, I think. And he, he referred to it as a body weight throw, using the weight of your body to take your opponent over you. And that's a good description as well. So anyway, that being said... Let's get into some tactical tactical considerations of Tomoanagi, but in all sacrifice throws in general before we jump into the actual videos here. Because I think, you know, you should really be aware tactically what throws work best in what situation. Okay, if you're a competitive judo or sambo athlete, submission grappling, um, you know, in, in, the, the, here's the simple fact, Okay. You use Tomoanagi for two primary reasons. One, to throw your opponent, or number two, to transition to the ground for some type of a submission technique. Okay, Tomoanagi is fabulously efficient for both of those purposes. So that's your, that's your tactical application of it you're, when, when you're on the mat. But there's some things you should really consider, like when you're ahead in the score, when you're behind in the score, things like that. And I, I point this out in my book, Winning on the Mat. And we still have copies of that in, uh, it's, it's out of print now, it was printed by Turtle, but it is out of print now, but it is in our Welcome, La Welcome Mat uh, online store if you want to get a copy. And I do con talk about tactical considerations of different throws. Certainly Tomoanagi or any sacrifice though, any Sutimi Waza falls into this category and you should look at it. So here's number one. Number one thing I really believe, and it, it's been p proven out in countless competitions, countless matches of athletes and, and my own athletes and matches I've seen. If you're ahead in the score, do not try a Tomoanagi. Do not try a sacrifice technique, okay? Uh, because it can too easily be construed by the referee as a throw for your from your opponent. Um, if he nullifies it or blocks your throw or even yells when you are attempting to throw him and somehow your throw does not work, um, in many cases, the referee's looking for a score to, to, to award. 
and he may give it to the other guy. Okay, so if you're ahead in the score and you want to keep your lead, do not do a sacrifice t- technique, and Tomo and I in particular, because it looks too much like you've been thrown to the mat. They say, well, if you do it right, that won't be the case. Well, okay, but again, we got to be, if you want to win the match, and if it's a tight match, okay, and there's, there's, and the referee is looking, and here's another consideration, if, if, if it's a tight match and the referee is looking for something to give somebody to, to end this stalemate, okay, and you do a Tomoanagi, okay, and the ref, and your opponent blocks it, nullifies it, stops it somehow, and you go down the mat, often the first guy to hit the mat, the score goes against him or her, okay? So keep that in mind. So it's not a safe attack to use if you are ahead in the score or if you are behind in the score, Okay, or if the score is equal, I should say. Now, on the other hand, if you are behind in the score and you've got a good Tomoanagi, uh, go for it. Okay, I mean, what have you got to lose? All right. Also, it is a great transition technique. Okay, a number of my athletes have used a uh, spinning Tomoanagi or a knee push type Tomoanagi to get their opponent to the mat and immediately transition to Jujigatami. It, tactically, it is a dynamite technique to do that f- with, with, for that purpose. So Tomoanagi as a transition is a great way to set your opponent up and get your, get your Jujigatami. So tactically, Tomoanagi has its good points and its bad points. Okay, and again, the bad point is if you're ahead in the score or the score is tied, I do not recommend it. Okay. So that's some tactical considerations I did want to a point out here. Um, let me see if I've got any more here. I must also say, usually Tomoanagi comes out of a very fast tempo, fast paced affair. If you, when you hook up with your opponent, there are two things that happen it, to, to really lend to a good Tomoanagi situation. Um, especially Yoko Tomoanagi. Uh, one is you have a long space. There's a lot, a lot of, you know, body space between you and your opponent. Maybe a long grip. There's between the hips, so it's you, you've got a fairly long grip. You're fairly far away from him when you make contact. Another thing, comes out of a very fast pace. You might grab a hold of each other, have a very wide distance between you two, and make a quick step and hit your Tomoanagi. So you need space and you need generally a fast tempo to set the Tomoanagi up. Not always for the straight line Tomoanagi, but certainly almost always for the Yoko Tomoanagi. So those are some considerations tactically to think about Tomoanagi. With all that being said, we're going to look at 10 videos. Okay, so hold on to your hats. What I'm going to do is this. Uh, Instead of after each one talking and before each one talking, we're going to see, first of all, uh, three videos on the basic, what I call straight line, step in, standard Tomoanagi. Okay, now they will be uh, the basic one foot Tomoanagi into the stomach, okay, the, the hip area. They will be a double foot or leg assist Tomoanagi. And then we will go into a no gi uh, tie up Tomoanagi where you might have a, like a, a front headlock or guillotine situation. It's a no gi situation. So we're going to look at these three videos first and a straight line step in Tomoanagi. So let's go with that right now. Let's look at Tomo and Nage. Tomo means, it's generally interpreted means circle. Nage means to throw or to throw over some object. Tomo is, is a round little thing like this. That's a Tomo. So the Japanese name this circle throw or round throw, and it really is well named technique. There are several different ways to do it. We're going to show the real basic, standard, straight line, step in Tomo and Nage, like everybody sees a lot. This may be old-fashioned, but an old coach of mine said it's, it's old-fashioned, it's cool. So here we go. So if you guys could tie up, we've got Derek and Mike here. We've got a standard Kumikana, natural, normal grip here. What, what Derek's going to do is basically step into Mike. I'll get out of the camera range here. He's going to step into Mike very low. That's his base leg. That's his anchor leg right there. And when he steps in, he's going to swing in and, and put his other foot in either Mike's hip or his gut somewhere. And your personal preference, whether you put your foot directly in the man's, not in his belt, like a lot of teachers tell, or to side a little bit on his hip, totally up to you, totally up to the person doing it, make it work for you. So I'll I'll come out and do it, get started again, guys. So so he's going to step in, and he's going to basically roll over.
looking at a Tomoanagi with a leg assist or a foot assist. Some people call it double leg or both leg Tomoanagi. Uh, call it what you want, it still works. Here's what happens. I'm going to get out of the way here. Uh, Derek, are you going to start first? Okay. Standard Tomoanagi, you just use the one leg. Well, this one, he's going to use both of them. So he may start with one and add the second one in to give it a little more impetus and to throw a little more control over Mike's body. And there we go. You can see how he's in there. And now when he does it, he will roll Mike over and come right over on top of him. Double sleeve grip. When you're doing Tomoanagi, this type of Tomoanagi, you know, some throws like Sumigeshi or corner counter throw, you want to get a big grip over the top. So get a big grip over the top. This would be not a good grip for what we want to do here. We're, what we want to do, Derek wants to have clear opening inside of Mike's, the mass of Mike's body here, his chest, hips area. Okay? So it's even better if Mike's really low and defensive because he's get, Mike is giving Derek his hips. He's giving him a lot of space to work in there. Having a, a double sleeve grip, could be low, could be high, your choice entirely, depends on you. But you're using double sleeves here, grip here, grip here on the sleeve. As he steps in, he's just gonna come in with a foot assist to Monagi. Right on top. Notice his both feet are pretty much in the hips, okay? So, one more time, and I'm gonna let Mike toss you a few times. Come in there. Right on top. Great to Monagi. Or Mike, why don't you do yours and show that people will do it all a little bit differently. Standard straight line to Monagi, but again, it's just with a leg assist. Right on top. Quite good. Quite good. Notice how Mike's feet were right on Derek's hips and his toes were pointed out, heels in. Very nice. Very nice. Go. Kind of hard for the guys to do it slow, but you're doing a great job, guys. Mike, do you go ahead and do it fast. Do it, do it fast, yeah. Step in, man, right over. You may pick up also, Derek and Mike, when they're throwing each other, they're kind of steering with their hands and steering with their feet. So if the guy's turning too far to the side, you think you'll lose control or not get him completely onto his back, you may push him with your feet, with your hands a little more over. This is a really good one you can steer with. After you've done this enough, you kind of get the feel of it. And this is a good way to get that feel of it. So you can steer them better with both your hands and your feet. So, Mike's coming in. Now, that little Let's look at Tomo Nagi in a no-gi situation. Tomo Nagi is circle throw. And we're going to do it with... Um, Derek, why don't you explain it so you kind of set it up because we're going to have a head and arm, kind of a, a, right. almost a guillotine situation. Okay, so it's basically we're, we're going to do a, a snap down, but we don't snap all the way down to the ground. I'm going to pop the head down, catch, catch, okay? So it's almost like I'm getting a head and arm guillotine, okay? A lot of times we're from here and you just pop, come back in on it, okay? And normally we're doing foot sweeps or singles, but sometimes they catch on to that and they pop their hips back. So as soon as his hips go back, I know he's primed for its Moanagi. So everything else from there is, is pretty standard. I'm gonna take a deep step in, and I'm going to stick my foot up there or on his hip and then it becomes way easier because now I can actually pull and lever him over with his head and his arm. So again, I step deep in. You end up in a nice uh, position on top. Let's take a look at that hand position, that hand fighting you're doing. So in the top, let me get a better view here. So you got that right hand, pretty much meat hook the back of the head. You're going to put that under. Pop out. Pop out. Okay. Okay. And come you kind of in. swim under, really. You kind of yeah. swim with your right hand under. Right. Come in. Now let me come, come to the other side here. Let's get a look at that view. We'll, I'll come from here. Okay. Okay, so again, I'm popping out, mm -hmm. coming back in. So you're trapping. Now look at that strong overhead trap. Okay, good. I'll come back to the other side, guys. You guys want, we're kind of running out of mat. Why don't you guys move toward Mike's back a little bit there. There you go. So let's have a look at that again. So pop out, hook. Okay. And you come right over on top of them, finish with a mount position, dominant position there. Now you could be using this in no gi as well, or gi as well, no gi. It oh, just yeah. happens to work yeah. very well for no gi. Pretty much anything you can use in no gi situation, definitely use in gi. Yeah. And I, I use this in sambo a lot, so it, it doesn't really matter if you've got a gi or, or not. You know, I could just as easily have a grip like this and pop down, snap them down into here. 
Okay. And this is especially good for those guys who are very low, right. very they have their hips very far away, they're very defensive, or, or just a low type slung, low fighter. Okay, so again, got a good control of his head, because if he wants to be down there, fine, I'm going to control what he's giving me, which is his head and his shoulders. And then a deep step in, probably Come right over on top. So we'll, we'll call that as basically a guillotine grip to start your Tomoanagi. Okay. Okay, and you saw those are three pretty much basic applications of how to hit Tomoanagi. Uh, they all work. They're very effective. And again, adapt everything you see here to make it work for you. Okay, so this is how I teach it. This is how I show it to my guys and gals on the mat. And it's been working for a lot of years, and I think it'll continue to work for a lot of years to come. Now, let's look at Yoko Tomoanagi or side Tomoanagi. It's often called the spinning Tomoanagi. Some people early in its, in its history call it Tobi Tomoanagi. It still might be called by some people that, or skip in Tomoanagi. It is exceedingly effective. It comes out of a very fast pace. It is just a dynamite throw. And we're going to look at uh, five videos on that. And we're going to start with the, the, the basics of it, okay? And uh, just two, two different variations of the spinning or Yoko Tomoanagi, side Tomoanagi. Then we're going to look, work directly on, uh, as a transition, Yoko Tomoanagi to Jujigatami, uh, one of my favorite moves, and I, you know, you'll see it here. Number three, uh, you're going to push the opponent to set him up to make him react and then spin in for a Yoko Tomoanagi. And that's going to lend directly into the next video, which is going to be kind of a Kouchi setup, Kouchi Gari setup. And you can use this as a foot slap setup. This is a very popular style of setting people up for Tomoanagi. So that's going to that's be the fourth video, the Kouchi Gari into a Tomoanagi. We're going to talk about that. And the last one, um, great coach and good friend of mine, Don Hinchcliffe, is going to be teaching uh, a sit-down Yoko Tomoanagi. He learned from one of his instructors who was a tri tremendous judo player too. So here we come up with five videos on Yoko Tomonagi. So here we go. We're going to look at Yoko Tomonagi or side Tomonagi. In the early days of, of you know, when this throw was, became popular back in the 60s, very popular, it was also called Tobi Tomonagi or skip in style Tomonagi because of the different ways they did the setup. But as time went on, as we saw more and more efficiency in this move, we saw it more to the side. So that's why it's often called the Yoko Tomoanagi these days. This is a very versatile throw in just about every body weight class and every male or female, judo, sambo, whatever it may be. Let's take a look at Yoko Tomoanagi's side. By the way, we'll also, it's a great setup, which we're going to do here in a bit, into Jujigatami, which we really like. So we'll, we'll be doing a bit of that too. So let's get the guys here. We got, okay, we got uh, Mike and Derek here. Derek's going to be doing the technique. I'll step all over here, guys. Now, when we start our Yoko Tomoanagi, Derek is going to be leading with his left. He's got a right side grip, but he's going to be leading with his left primarily, okay? That's his, that's his setup leg. That's his base leg or sugar foot, whatever you want to call it. That's because why we do that is because he wants all the space to be able to move under Mike, tuck under him, put his foot right about here somewhere, and throw him over his head. So when he does this, he's going to be, look, just we'll break it down to start, put your foot in there and roll your head, and watch how he rolls his head under. It's very difficult not to throw him once you do this because the momentum, the body, the body went going over. As you can see how that happens. So he knows he wants to start with his left foot, and look at that right foot there, and he comes right over and he can roll over the top, as you can see. It's very important in learning Yoko Tomonagi. Come into it again, leave that foot again. Leave that foot. Okay, now when he puts that foot up there, that's Derek's cue to curl a very shrimp, very tight. Get his elbow in. Don't float your elbow. Get your elbow in, and that helps put your body in a very compact, tight space. See how the position is here? The back leg is driving off the mat. The back leg here, this is a driving off the mat. Eventually, it won't, but right now, it's driving off the mat for more power into the throw. Okay? Come on. Come on, do it again. Go ahead and stay there, Sandy, with a video. We can start there. So let's go ahead and do it, do it one more time. Actually, throw. Come right over on top. Very, very useful technique in all body weight classes, but you tend to see this a lot in the lighter weights because this comes out of a very fast tempo in judo and samba. We see that very fast tempo. Right over. Finish it up. There are other ways to do it, to finish out. 
you can throw it across your body. You want to try it with, throw it, when you went to one? Yeah, throw the side, I'll get out of your way, guys. So here's a, here's a variation of it to throw that way. Once you go in, he direct through my across Derek's body. One more time, guys. Just a little different variation. Angle of the throw is different a bit here. And there we have that. That's a very popular way to do it as well. So these are just some variations of doing Yoko Tomo and Aigi. Now let's take a look at how we like to do Yoko Tomo and Aigi right into Juji because we find great value in that as well. And this is, you know, I first picked it up in Sambo and uh, we've been using it a lot. In just about any fighting sport we do, we like to do this technique. So can you just demo spinning Juji to Tomo and Aigi? There we go. So Yoko Tomo Nagi has a lot of value, if nothing else. You may not like it as a throw, but you sure may like it as a setup to get your Juju Katami. You notice he did a little slightly different. He put his leg on the outside, of his, his foot on the outside of Mike's hip, uh, just as a setup to get the body across. Do that one more time, right like that. That's also good too. So if you do, if that's what you want, is a Tomo Nagi setup to a Juju, that's often a good way to get it. So there we have Yoko Tomo Nagi uh, as a throw and also as a great setup. I'm doing mine off of the left side, but you can do it off of the right side just as easy. So I'm going to come over on the same side that I want my leg up. I want my right leg up. So I'm going to rotate over here. And then as I come in, I'm going to weave with my left and push his right leg. Okay? Push, he moves. My foot comes up. Push again. And over we go. And you can flip over on him as well. But use your hands just like we've worked See it's very economy of movement everybody and like Don Hinchcliffe was saying earlier you don't want to give him a lot of air time where he can spin out and maybe counter do something else you want to get him fast on his back and this is a way of doing it can you kind of from a different angle so we can see a back, back view of this Real hard pull, real hard push. Okay, if you don't have that, it's not going to work. I come through here, I'm pushing, and I get my foot nice and deep, and I sit back and I don't use my hands, you just collapse it down. Okay, no more guy. We're going to pull nice and hard on the sleeve, turn, my God, you can sink. Look at whichever side you're going to go, try to get him as quickly as you can. A very fast turn into that direction. So if your right foot is pushing, you're actually rolling to your right. Yes, but you're you're pulling so hard and punching so hard with this hand, it's almost easy to turn that way. Can you show us one more time and show us the hand action as you're doing it? Maybe from a different direction here. Here, here push. Okay, foot up as I'm coming down and pulling nice and hard. Lift. And just come and feel my hand up, almost like I'm trying to punch the mat. So I've got a good pull here. My knuckles are punched right on the mat. I'll try and do it a little bit slower. Okay. See, my hand's right here, touching the mat. Still got a good, nice, tight grip here. It's, the leg is definitely a big part to throw, but the hands are, are really the, the star there. But in a real finish, you'd follow up, follow right onto him, onto in a holding situation on top of him. Okay, let's try that, guys. Right. Yeah, kind of a, a Yoko Tomonagi, a side Tomonagi, um, that is a, a really nice fake out style because what Derek's going to do? Are you going to use your left foot to prop with right. your right foot? So he's going to fake. He's going to like do a foot sweep, fake with a left foot sweep, sweep to open, open him up. See that? Little, see I slap the inside of his foot. That made Ben open up. Okay. 
So start that again. So they open up, you stand your grip, and just kind of fake a coachy, and you slip them right in, okay? So it's a really nice way to set up. It's standard stuff. You know, you see guys like Kasha Wazaki probably did this with great success and, and others. But uh, it really is a good way to open his legs up and open his stance up to get your Tomonagi in. So can you... And really that, that initial setup is, is, is really just the setup. It's, it's to elicit a response. It's to open Ben up. Can you show how you open him up? Just kind of slap his, like a fake a Kouchi actually. Boom, there you go. See, it puts your foot right there like you say, stay in line with that. Then he goes to action. Spins right in. Once we open up that face free, the, the same thing we were doing before about moving with that knee, it's going to be the, the same kind of pattern. I'm just opening up more of the classic style of that. Moving his foot and then letting my foot continue down. And then this one is going to curl that knee super, super tight. And I'm going to try and pull and kick that way. So there's some, oh, some twist to it that wasn't there before. Okay, so instead of him coming right there, I'm going to twist in and try to extend that way. So I'm up and under. And as long as you're pulling on the, the sleeves, it makes the twist fairly simple. Okay? Donnie was saying earlier, because I'm controlling this hand and pulling super hard, he can't post that the cartwheel out. If he does try and post with that, I'm pushing him that way. So he's thinking the cartwheel that way. I'm thinking he's pulling him and extend my leg when he can go behind him. Hello. Let go of the pull or the, the push until he's over there. And in that reaction, I'm still in the middle of it, but slightly forward. So I've got to curl under a little bit harder and pull harder. Variation of Komonagi, Yoko Komonagi. And it's more to the side than straight over the top. And the way that I like to set it up is I was thinking, how am I going to be able, which direction am I going to be able to break this balance the easiest, whether I'm standing doing a standing throw, a forward throw, a rear throw, or a sacrifice throw. And if I can get this leg forward, and I see his balance easily broken this way now, and I can set underneath him in here and set down and place my foot here. I'm a right-handed player and I've still got control of this right side so he can't stick his hand out to stop this throw. And then I can turn him over and just rotate him over my foot. Okay? If this foot was forward, that foot was forward and I'm stepping in trying to do this. His foot's here and, and with me trying to throw him over the top of that leg, it makes it a lot harder, a lot tougher for me to be able to do that. So I want to be able to get this foot forward. So what I'll do is just walk back. Just, just go over. I'm just, just going to walk a little back. Just like this. Okay, we're going to walk back this way. So what I'll do is when this foot's coming forward, which is what I want, I'll place my foot right there. Okay, so this foot's back, this foot's forward, now I'm inside. Now I'm going to sit down and stick my foot right in here, like right here. And I'm probably like right under his belt, on his stomach, on his head. Okay, so I'm going to sit in and stand up. Okay, so I'm going to sit in here and just turn it over to the side. Because that's where the balance is put. Okay? So it's a really easy setup for this throw. We're just going to walk over. 
walking back to the side, I don't go back, I don't go back more. He starts coming this way. And I'm not going to take that step. I'm going to let him step right into it, sit down in it, and come up to the side. Control this arm so you can't reach out and stop it. Practice it, take one or two steps back, come back this way. I might even pick up this foot like I'm going to step back. I'll pull with this hand just like we were going to walk. And then I don't pick this foot up and step back. I pick it up and I put it right back down so it gets in. And then I'm just going to set down. Right my foot here and rotate him over my foot. And then I use my hands, both hands, to rotate him over. Okay? Questions? <coughs> Good. Let's try it. Right. Again, as always, what you see here, adapt it, change it, make it work for you. Okay. We're just showing you a lot of variables and how to do Tomonagi. In this case, we just saw Yoko Tomonagi. Please change them to make it work for you. I mean, don't think what is here is the only thing that's out there in the world of Tomonagi because there's a lot more. Okay. Last thing, we're last set of videos we're going to look at. We're going to, we're going to look at two more. And Tomonagi is also useful in ground fighting or Newaza you know, fighting off the bottom position. Very useful. And we're going to show two variations, two double foot or leg assist to uh setups from, you know, the bottom guard, basically. Okay. The first one will be uh, directly into a pin. Okay. And you can use any pin, but you'll see Derek, and we're, we're going to be showing a specific way to come into a pin here that we like. Again, any pin can be used, but we're going to show the one we kind of like. And also then we're going to see a double foot tomonagi right into jujigatami. And again, I might add, you can use tomonagi, roll them all the way over, do some kind of a lapel strangle, you know, front cross choke or, you know, uh, you know, jujijume type thing. You can use any type, any type of follow through you want from a tomonagi and finish them on the ground. We're just going to show one to a pin and one to jujigatami. So without further ado, let's look at the last two videos on double foot tomonagi and from a Nawaza position. So here we go. We're going to do a nice turn uh, in this particular case. It's like a double foot to Monagi. And you're already on the bottom, and it's, it's a really cool move. And you'll see, Derek, why don't you do a demo on, on Eric here? And this will just do it, and we'll talk about it. Go over the pin first. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we always want to get a juju coming pin, but right now let's just do the pin. So just take a look at the pin. <clears throat> and right there, she's you right on. I mean, you can, any type of a pinning situation you want. So let's look at this, and I'm going to have Derek talk to you about how he's actually getting under here. Uh, key things to remember: if he is, if you're fighting off your buttocks, off your backside, and you know you're using your feet like hands, we always talk about that. He's, he's controlling, in this particular case, he's got double sleeves. He might, he might have a different grip up here at the lapel. It, it, really, what he wants to do, what's his preference, where you have better control. So that's something that's, that's on you. Play with that tonight and practice and see which works better for you, what type of a grip. Uh, it's very difficult to come over the top, so you're probably going to get a, a lapel and sleeve or a double sleeve situation. I would not say do a double lapel grip because he can post out with his hands. You, you want to at least control at least one appendage if not both. That's why he grabs double sleeves to do this. He likes to whip them over and control his arms. But the key thing to remember, Derek's going to scoot under Eric as far as he can, and his feet are in his hips. And, and, and look at his feet. If you see, his toes are out, his heels are in. He's really manipulating at the hips. So he's controlling his, his opponent, and as he does that, he scoots under, and he just, it's a basic roll. Yep. Okay, so go ahead. So you're going to put your feet in and pull a little bit, and then pop your butt straight back if you can, okay? 
Boom, see how he's going forward? Okay, now from here, you keep pulling, you straighten your feet out, roll over the shoulder. Okay, if you're rolling over the shoulder, usually coming into <clears throat> the floating pin, if he was, is easier because they just rolled over the shoulder. But some of you might come straight over into the mount. Okay, so. You, you point out a very important thing here that a lot of guys have trouble with. Like to get them on board is what the phrase he uses, which is a very good phrase. Can you talk about how you popped under there? That's a key point of all your skill. So I'm not just going to try and get him from here, okay? Because then when I push, he goes backwards, okay? So I'm going to use my feet and pull him to get him right about there, and then my, my hips can go underneath, okay? So pop, boom, there he goes, okay? Keep pulling, keep pushing with your feet, and then roll over that shoulder. And if you keep a hold of his sleeves, or his lapels, or one lapel, one sleeve, whatever it is, you should be able to pull yourself right up if you stay nice and round. Not just a, a turnover or rollover, he's going to manipulate poor Eric into a nice Juju Tommy situation. So I'll let him take it away. It's a really skillful application of how to get into Juju Tommy. All right. So, first things first, hands on top or slightly inside his forearm sleeves. Okay? That allows me to pin his arm in and get ready for the, the juji. If I'm out here, I'm gonna have to come around and secure the arm. So the pull's a little bit easier and it allows me to collect his arm into my torso, okay? So as he pops up, okay, I gotta hold everything. I'm gonna bring him in, shift, okay? So you can already see me underneath there, okay? Boom, boom, over, around. You see I'm coming up with his foot down and my knee right here. Okay, the next thing is that this foot is going to cut in right there. Okay, I'm going to roll towards his feet. That frees up this leg. So you're, everybody's always like, I'm on my knee, I can't get my knee over there. And it's like, yeah, because your weight's on the knee. Of course you can't get that over there. So roll towards his belt and his feet. See how that allows me to collect his, his head? And now I sit back. Okay, he pops up, down, shift, back, over, foot down on the mat so I can roll up onto my knee. I've got his elbow and my chest like I always do when I'm doing a Juji Katami. The foot that's flat on the mat is going to cut up underneath his shoulder because I pulled this arm up. Okay, now I'm sitting on his chest with that thigh and I'm going to roll towards his belt line to free up the knee that I'm posting on right now. Boom, catch the head. I'm sitting right back on my butt. Cross my feet for the guys that like doing that. Everybody else heels in, collect and sit back. And just to round things out today, just to finish up, Tomoe Nagi can be used by anybody, any weight. Now, there, there are some cases uh, where your limbs may be actually too long and you would uh, alter it somewhat. You know, I'm, I'm a tall guy, I'm 6'4". Um, and I never used Tomonagi ever as a competitor, but I did use Sumigeishi. I was called a Sumigeishi or Hikomigeishi, um, the, the tall man's Tomonagi, uh, because I could do them better with my long legs. So, granted, it, it is much better for a shorter person against a bigger person, but I, I have seen heavyweights use Tomonagi with some success. So, you know, it, it's a very viable throw. It's a great throw. Again, one of the original throws coming from jiu-jitsu directly into judo and every other combat sport on earth uh, and still practice with great efficiency and, and effectiveness. So Tomona is a great technique, and that's about it for today. I'm not going to go any more because we've spent a lot of time studying Tomonagi, and um, I think that's it for me. So thanks for watching. See you next time.